You're in Mark chapter 10. Look at verse number two. The Bible reads, And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Tempting him. And just so you know, that put away his wife, it's talking about divorce. Okay, when you're putting away your wife, in the Bible, it's talking about divorce. Verse number three, And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. Look at this, verse number six. But from the beginning of the creation... God made them male and female. This is what we just read in Genesis chapter 2. God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Those twain means two. So you have two, but now all of a sudden it's one flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. They're no more two. Now you're left with one. When you have that marriage, you, don't, you no longer have two, you have one. This is why, and, and you know, the, the younger generation especially needs to understand this if they ever hear, because these days you don't hear people referred to as Mr. and Mrs. Burzens, Mr. and Mrs. Cartagena. You, know, you, you don't hear that anymore, even though that used to be just, just the normal and the standard. And that's why you know, I refer to people, Mrs. Rogers, Mrs. Pax, Miss, you know, because it's one person, we're just identifying the one, you know, the, the one half of the whole of the one because when you get married you know the woman takes the name of the man because that's why you become one you know one person that's why you take the name these all have biblical reasons you, you might think oh well just tradition you know oh it's just you know it's it's just uh um practical no there's there's more to it than that there's more meaning to it than that and these days people have, have gotten so um so little manners, I guess, in general, it, you know, there's just, you know, kids are just referring to people by their first names, referring to parents by first names. There's not, you know, it's, it's, it's not even, uh, uh, there's not very much respect anymore. And, and it's not appropriate either. And we start losing a lot of, you know, and you say, Pastor Burns, what, you know, you're nitpicking. Well, you know what? Every little thing adds up. All these little details, they mean something. And they're all being eroded just, just one after another. And yeah, any one individual thing, you might say that's not that big of a deal. But when you look at the whole, when you look at the collective, that's a big, it's a big transition. It's a big shift and it affects the way people think. We need to be thinking about marriage as being two people are no longer two anymore. You're one. And he goes on further to explain in, in Mark chapter 10, he says, in verse number 9, what therefore God hath joined together. So when that marriage happens, God joins you together. This isn't even just an act of man anymore. You may have chosen your wife. You may have chosen your husband. But when you get married, God brings you together. It says, what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Don't break what God has joined together. When you've gotten married to your spouse, God joined you together and made you one flesh. Don't split that up and divide that asunder. It says, um, and then in verse number 10, he says, and in the house, his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he saith unto them, whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. Now, look, I'm going to preach this regularly. I mentioned before, this is something that needs to be preached. Because this isn't popular. And this, you know, it may not be popular. And this sermon has caused people to leave the church almost every single time I preached on this. And you know what? I'm going to keep preaching it. Because if people leave over what the Bible says, that's not on me. That's not my fault. you got a problem with God. You've got a problem with not wanting to hear the truth, but you know what? At least you've got a place where you can walk into and you're going to hear the truth preached. Because now more than ever, people need to hear the truth. We can't just lie to each other and tell people, oh, no, it's okay. Oh, no, God understands. Oh, no, it's no big deal. Yeah, go ahead and get a divorce. Just marry someone else. Find your other soulmate. Find Look, it's nonsense. And it's destroying families. It's destroying children. It's destroying the youth. It's destroying the future. This is foundational. Families, the house being divided against itself is not going to stand. And if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? 